my master's degree and doing loads of other stuff that you probably won't find very interesting so let's leave it at that. I actually have a ton of exhibitions that I want to talk about mostly from last year but instead I'm going to talk about an exhibition that opened last week. This particular exhibition is at the Serralves Museum of Contemporary Art here in Porto and I'm currently an intern there. So I kind of feel proud of this exhibition, even though I had absolutely nothing to do with it. But anyway, this exhibition showcases the work from some of the most cutting-edge young artists from Portugal. But it's also a very cool show if you're interested in curating. This exhibition is fresh. It lets the artworks breathe and shine on their own, as well as working with each other. And it uses a wealth of installation strategies that give it a special rhythm and pace. The artworks are allowed to freely occupy the space of the museum, from playing with scale to an unusual use of spaces of passages that forces the visitors to literally come to face to face with the artworks or to transit through an artwork to get to a kind of hidden passage to the rest of the exhibition. The show manages to be extremely conceptual and physically engaging. Another interesting thing about this exhibition is this. A free publication produced in collaboration with the artists. It's basically an anthology of texts that were selected by the artists themselves as a companion to the exhibition, not to help with interpretation, but to actually add a layer of meaning. There are several variant covers, these are my favorite, especially this one. This is the first show of a new season in Sahalvish because it marks the beginning of the new director's program. Susan Cotter arrived in the museum last year and it's already clear that she plans to place Sahalvis right in the middle of the contemporary art world, even though and maybe taking advantage of the fact that we're pretty remote when compared to traditional art circles. So, about this show. Like the title says, there are 12 different artists working in different mediums, and it's remarkable how cohesive it looks, considering how different they all are. It doesn't feel like the artworks compete or challenge each other, which can be either good or bad, considering how you look at it. I happen to think it's a good thing, especially considering how conceptual some of these artworks are. These are all emergent artists or collectives from Portugal, but some of them have lived, worked and exhibited in other countries, so maybe you've heard of them. Here are a few highlights. This video by artist Priscila Fernandes is titled Product of Play and it's a study of childhood and its dichotomies. I actually had to watch this video a few times. The first time I watched, I thought it was playful and a bit funny, but the second time I watched, I found it unsettling. And by the third time, it felt downright creepy. Just watch. <laughs> exhibition features the biggest and also the tiniest works. The big one is Parabola by artist André Souza and it's a kind of architectural painting slash landscape slash sculpture. In contrast, Ana Santos' pieces feel strangely intimate, 
inviting the viewer to come closer and study the materiality of her found objects. Next, we have the works of Carla Philippe. She uses drawings, found objects, colleges and performance to study the subject of railways. If that doesn't sound interesting, think of all the social aspects around this topic, from employment issues to the impact of transportation and industrialization. This is actually a fertile ground for Carla's type of anthropological research with autobiographical undertones. Close by, Nuno da Luz's piece called Zetesis is a survival blanket with speakers attached. To fully experience this piece, you have to physically enter it and listen attentively to the sound of the wind. Gabriela Branch and Benjamin Crotte's film Liberdade is a beautifully shot story about an Angolan man and a Chinese woman whose uneasy relationship unfolds against the background of a post-colonial struggle towards identity and economical independence. The next and final room is in a way the strangest one in this exhibition, not the least because it brings together works with very different focuses. Sergio Carroña's sculptures are informed by his relationship to nature, while Sonia Almeida's abstract paintings explore color systems with titles such as RGB Whole or yellow, red, magenta, blue. On the other hand, Maru Sequeira's videos and assemblages deal with social issues. The videos show men who survive in the city streets of Porto, begging, stealing, dancing and talking. The objects that surround the videos invoke the lives of those depicted. Finally, the artistic duo Von Callao presents a multimedia work in several parts, in the opening night, we got to watch a performance that I can only describe as psychedelic. I wish I could show it to you, but it was far too dark for me to be able to film it. The work also involves posters and the projection, which you can see here. The room where this was projected is completely dark. You literally lose any point of reference except for the dancing image that appears and disappears. And that's it! This exhibition will be in Serralves until May of this year. Be sure to check it out if you come to Porto. Join me next week or next month for another episode. In the meantime, you can check out my website where I write and my Tumblr page where I post contemporary art every single day. Bye!